this is a small crowd i'll uh, just uh, make it a bit more informal uh, my name is manoj gupta i'm founder and ceo of craftchilla.com uh, we are india's largest online marketplace for ethnic products uh, for ethnic products for us means that uh, anything and everything which has come out of this country which is ip of this country where product can be traced uh, over 500 to 1000 in 1000 of years uh that pretty much uh, is ethnic for us uh, thematically we are focused on ethnic uh, but from a category perspective we are across uh, we have you know ethnic fashion ethnic food that they home uh, handicrafts we have uh, ethnic uh, herbal products ayurvedic products uh, spiritual products ethnic food basically agnostic across categories uh, but thematically only focus on ethnic uh, we started about 4 uh, and a half years ago in 2011 um, at that point in time pretty much uh, you know in india stage in some ways uh, we were one of the very few marketplaces uh, which emerged uh, in 2011 uh, personally just to give you my background uh, before starting kapsula I was a venture capitalist uh, at Nexus Venture Partners. Uh, I was involved in, you know, few of the early stage companies there. Um, uh, I was there for four years. Uh, before that, I uh, started a tech company uh, in US in San Diego. Um, you know, ran it for six years, sold it, and came back to India. Uh, so pretty much come from a tech background. So if you want to talk tech, I can still talk tech, but I'll keep it focused on. Craftsilla, you know our journey, what we have done. Uh, one of the unique things about Craftsilla, uh, or the three, four unique things about Craftsilla. Uh, one of that is that we we are, as you know, Craftsilla. You know, we are ethnic space. So uh, we are not creating a replica of uh, anything in East or West. Uh, we are what we are, part of India, completely rooted in India. Uh, In, in that way, very very unique. Um, the second thing unique about this is this category is uh, you know has a interesting gross margin. You know, for, you know, sixty to eighty percent gross margin. Um, we take twenty percent commission. Uh, it is a category where you can actually become profitable in e-commerce. Um, I keep telling a lot of people that if we cannot become profitable, I don't think anyone can in the world. Um, in India, sorry. Uh, uh third thing uh, unique about this category is that uh, about craftsilla as such is uh, we are one of the very few e-commerce companies we don't give discounts coupons nothing you know you'll not hear you know that kind of story from us uh, it's a it's a e-commerce story which uh, completely built on value to consumer and value to seller uh, so therefore you know keep really selling the value proposition of a you know real consumer company i would say to everyone yeah 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 so coming to the positioning right uh, so at sea basically is uh, it's uh, rooted uh, in more about handmade you know primary producer so if you are a wholesaler you cannot sell on etsy for example if you if you don't have if your products are machine made you cannot sell uh, we are about ethnic so handmade is a subset of what we do but we also have machine made we have wholesalers you know there is no restriction on that yeah fab india uh, so so the way we look at ethnic uh, we looked at ethnic and we have been looking at ethnic and the reason why we are so successful uh, despite uh, you know to tell you we are the largest ethnic brand right now in india you know, the kind of sale we do uh, you know fabinda doesn't do and none, uh, no one else the reason is that uh, we we looked at ethnic from a very mainstream angle we said ethnic is so mainstream uh, why make it exotic so so a lot of times ethnic you know you will see the companies in e-commerce were focused on outside of india market a lot of times e-commerce or or ethnic brands as such were focused on 
higher in lehengas, higher in saris, and those kind of stuff, right? You said that with with online, I can actually take ethnic, I, actually I can target the mainstream ethnic part, right? Which is huge. You know, if if you go out of any big city, almost you know the daily lifestyle has a lot of ethnic, uh, you know, biggest is ethnic fashion, right? Uh, uh, so so that's regarding the you know positioning. We look at very mainstream ethnic. Uh, we don't look at high and low and uh, uh, across uh, the spectrum of all the consumer spectrum. Uh, we have 50 rupees product, we have 50,000 rupees langa. Because we are marketplace, you know, we can we can uh, play with the, we don't have to restrict ourselves to a particular inventory or a particular type of product. Uh, our story is that, you know, we are ethnic, uh, we are a marketplace for ethnic products. So, uh, and, and so basically those are the few unique things about Craftsilla um, and uh, you know just to tell you a little bit about I think just numbers and you know where we are we have 4 million products across categories uh, do about half a million orders every month uh, over now we have more than 2 million registered customers over 30 million unique visits and you know pretty well funded we we are more than fifty million dollar funded right now. Our uh, basically story is that uh, we are here to create something really, really big in ethnic. Uh, you know, we are here to sort of take over the whole ethnic empire and really get into all kind of ethnic, whether it's ethnic products, ethnic services, uh, ethnic brands. Uh, we are here to sell, you know, from mitais to, you know, Ayurvedic herbal products to, you know, high and lehenga, sari, sura suit, jewelry, whatever, whatever is the gamut of ethnic, you know, we are here to capture that. So primary, basically, uh, you know, the vision of Kapsula was and is take societies back to roots. Uh, uh, we, we realize that a lot of people are going in a particular direction and there's a lot of opportunity in other direction. Uh, I keep, you know, because I come from a VC background, I always, you know, used to tell and keep, still keep telling that if, if some, if, if uh, the opportunity is neither in the east and neither in the west, it's always northeast, north, south, you know, in different directions. Uh, you have to just look at opportunities and, you know, uh, where it doesn't exist, uh, and uh, you know, Kapsula is looking at that opportunity. So it's looking at opportunity which uh, is not traditionally very hard to pitch to a VC. For example, you know, VCs when we started, uh, they said, you know, what are you building? You're not building Uber of India, not building eBay of India, not building you know Amazon of India. So what are you building? It's very hard to pitch that story. So, but uh, I think uh, there's a huge opportunity in in this statement here, and uh, uh, we have been you know, we're seeing the you know we're reaping the benefits uh, in some ways of that, uh, and we we believe it's a huge opportunity. And as I said, there's nothing, none exists like Kapsula globally. Uh, we we are very very unique in that perspective, and we are one of the fastest growing e-commerce companies, grown like ten times the last twelve months. Uh, continue to grow very very fast uh, as uh, we grow our story will get highlighted a lot more uh, I personally believe that uh, in the next two to three years we'll be one of the top three or top five e-commerce brands in India so what has been the success mantra you know I'm just being very fluid if you have any questions you know Happy to answer uh, during the talk. Uh, it's it's uh, basically it's as I said, you know, it's being unique. Um, we could have, you know, aped something and created something, but we chose to be unique, and because we were unique, uh, we had advantages where you know we were not fighting for the same consumer. We didn't have to give discounts, coupons, uh, and you know, really. 
scale up uh, with very very little money so we have raised 50 million dollars but we are still have like 75% of my money lying in the bank right now it's uh, uh, something we have achieved in uh, you know very small amount of money so capital efficiency is one of the one of the you know success mantras uh, whatever we do we we'll, we are very very capital efficient we are one of the leanest and meanest start startup uh, we are one of the leanest and meanest uh, marketplace uh, we don't have no inventory no warehouse no logistics nothing it's just uh, uh you know you know you got 200 people just just that you know there's no no feed on the street uh, and of course we we have a global approach one of the unique things the other thing which we'll talk about is that we our market actually don't not only exists in india but also exists outside of india so we can literally you know uh, or, or we, the, the domain in which we are playing is the market in which we are playing is uh, global e-commerce marketplace uh, not just uh, not just indian e-commerce and one of the other things uh, has been the focus and persistence you know, that if if, uh, if you want uh, you know want to run a startup or if you have run a startup you would understand that that being very very focused and not uh, you know going east or west uh in and being very very persistent about about uh, you know what you're doing and being believing in you and just going and in, in the direction in which you believe that that is the right direction for me is is very very important uh, in any startup uh, and uh, you know we have been very successful in that uh you know when we started just just to you know it trade the story of Tatsula in some ways uh, is that uh, when we started we started with the uh, big bang uh, we we didn't have a lot of money but we were doing a lot of discounts that was 2011 time we we thought you know we could do something we could do a lot of these numbers on paper and you know so to VC raise big money and those kind of stuff but of course you know that approach didn't work uh, we ran out of money we we basically from 100 people we became 10 people and we we went through a very very tough phase in 2012 uh, 2013 2014 uh, and at that point in time is when you know a lot of our foundation for today got built uh, we we realized that you know we don't have to give coupons and discounts to to run an e-commerce company uh, and that would not have come unless, unless you know we have gone through this tough phase. Uh, we realize that you know there's a lot of a uh, lot of things we can do to tech. Uh, we don't really need to hire people. So till about uh, you know till about end of 2014, we were like 12 people, uh, and we were doing uh, pro more than 100 to 120 crore of GMV. Uh, right, so. And we were profitable. I mean, that's one of the other things uh, very unique about us that we were profitable. And then basically, uh, that was the time when you know we learned a lot of basic things about business. Uh, we learned how to wow a consumer. And uh, you know, 2015 was a time for us when we scaled really rapidly. Uh, we grew very very fast. Uh, we raised two rounds of funds. Uh, one was Series B and Series C uh, from really good venture funds, and uh, so that's basically is uh, in some ways uh, I thought you know and, and these has been the phases of Kapsula. You know, it was an impulsive start. It was not a start when it was a spotting of the opportunity and just starting the next day kind of stuff. Uh, if you think too much. Uh, it, in any startup, uh, you know, uh, it always makes you think about more pro and cons, and you start to think okay, the more cons and the less cons, and let's, let's not do and kind of stuff. So, so any startup, in my view, is any good startup you see, it all has been an impulsive start. You know, it's not about thinking too much. Uh, then there was a foundation build up, then the scale build up. And now we're getting into more into more brand build up, you know, uh, where we you know do TV advertising and 
print advertising and stuff. Uh, uh, and and uh, in 2017, 2018 is when we are looking to go public and you know show to the world that the, here is a e-commerce company which is really built on uh, you know true values of business and uh, something you know uh, which uh, you know will be an example of uh, you know, uh, something which can be really built. So a lot of people don't believe that in e-commerce in India, things can be built uh, which have value. I think uh, we need to, you know, someone needs to have show that as an example. And hopefully, we can do that. Uh, uh, I, I think pretty much uh, that's the story. I, I, I think, uh, you know, we are also a company which has been built on, you know, constraints. So. Uh, I, I say to a lot of people that uh, you have to define a table to dance. This is the table now. There's no nothing else. You don't have a whole floor to dance. So show me the magic. And because we were built uh, a company which is built out of constraints, uh, magic happened. Um, and we will continue to show magic uh, because we continue to believe in constraints uh, and not really uh, spending too much or. or Showing discounts or uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, so just 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 to be on becoming entrepreneur, you know, opportunity exists everywhere. It's more about observation than insights. You know, we can read a lot of papers, we can read lean through a lot of data. Uh, I always say that entrepreneurs are data creators. They create data for the next generation. They they. They very little. They take the data and you know uh, do something with it. So it's all about observation, experiments, uh, opportunity spotting, uh, and sometimes you have to go out of context. Uh, so uh, I don't come from handicraft industry. You know, uh, I I I always see that the best doctor is not necessarily has the best you know, uh, business in healthcare. For example, uh, uh, out of context always helps you to see a business or something with less emotion uh, more truthfully and and uh, you know and look it at a bird's eye view and say there's an opportunity here so so it do, doesn't necessarily has to be in that same domain in which you're doing uh, uh, sometimes you know just going out of context helps uh, and you should have passion to build something large small doesn't matter uh, you have to build something large you are becoming a startup um, and being personal focus is simple uh, complex business models don't work if you have too many complex things going on you should think about simplifying it uh, anyways business is a complex environment uh, you don't want to over complicate with your own variables and you know uh, constraints and those kind of stuff uh, and scalability is very important anything you do uh, one of the reasons why we chose marketplace is because it's very, very scalable. Today, everyone wants to be marketplace. You know, four years before, it was not the case. Uh, and we were the one of the very few company at that point in time who chose to be marketplace. Uh, but it's very, very scalable. It helps you scale infinitely without really worrying about inventory, warehouse, you know, uh, financing. And uh, you know, just just slightly become an entrepreneur. It's a beautiful journey. I I, I keep that slide as the last slide always, uh, just to you know, exhort people to become an entrepreneur. In my view, you have one life. You know, live it like an entrepreneur. Uh, so that's it. Yeah. Any questions you have? Happy to answer. Yeah, uh, in the world where uh, you, you need to reach uh, faster to the customer, I mean, you need to make delivery faster to the customer. You you, you said that you don't have a warehouse or something like that set up. So uh, I, I think you have actually built a constraint over there. So how do you deal with this? I mean, uh, the delivery time especially. Yes, so delivery times basically, we, the, the two three things about our business, right? A, we are not in a category where customers are looking to buy get the product the next day although there's expectation is 
which you know I, I can see that is becoming more and more uh, because everyone is doing that. Uh, but even then, even today, uh, customers are okay waiting three, four, five days. Not that, right? Second thing is that a uh, lot of our sellers actually dispatch on the same day. Yeah. So they're very, very quick uh, because they've seen how online has shaped their you know, business, their, their livelihood. Uh, you know, a lot of our sellers actually own now, you know, uh, big cars and those kind of stuff when they actually were really struggling to just you know, meet their ends uh, through your through your car. So they have seen that, you know, that uh, and they also understand that uh, customer needs to get product very quickly. So they dispatch on the same day. About 80% of our sellers dispatch on the same day. What value proposition your uh, send is actually bringing in when you actually bought? What was the strategy? Uh, which one? The send? Send, yeah. Yeah, so we acquired send, uh, which is a logistics, virtual logistics company. It's not, uh, there's no feet on the street kind of stuff. Uh, which to A, uh, gave us reach. So send basically integrates with all the courier companies in India. So, uh, today, you know, just few months back, we had 5,000 pin code reach. Today, we have 20,000 pin code reach. Uh, uh, the second thing is gives us efficiency. So, any shipment is gets routed to the courier company, which is uh, has the least RTO and least cost for us. So, I am not dependent on the particular courier company uh, going forward. So. Uh, it has done well for us. Again, you know, we didn't acquire a proper logistics company because for us that's not very capital efficient. Yeah, also one of my friend had this kind of model and he started, he actually used to buy it from some Dubai or somewhere kind of, and he used to sell it. But he has to close it down uh, because the rejection rate was quite a few. Uh, I, I don't exactly remember the number of uh, the percentage. What was the rejection? But the rejection criteria was like the 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 color I saw uh, or the shade I saw is exactly not matching or something like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, what is your rejection ratio and how we are dealing with it? Yeah, so for us uh, actually is not very bad. It's about three percent, which is you know acceptable. So, how big is the the seller network that you have, and how did you you know create that uh, network with such a thin team? You said yeah. about twelve members or something. Right? So we have today close to about thirty thousand sellers. Yeah, how big is thirty thousand sellers? Uh, you know, there are two three things which work for us. Right, one thing was uh, we we started in an era when no one was there for a s ethnic seller to list their products, right? So Craftsla in some ways was de facto domain or de facto destination uh, to list ethnic product. Right? Ethnic today is one of the hottest categories for all marketplaces, uh, all horizontal marketplaces. Right? It wasn't the case um, three years, four years back. Right? Uh, we championed this category, we brought in the category to this level where everyone wants to be uh, but at that point in time, sellers didn't have a lot of choices to move. Second thing is that our, we have open marketplace philosophy, which means we don't restrict anyone from entering the ecosystem, uh, which uh, you know helped. We are one of the easiest platform to list the product, and we kept it that way so that you know a lot of our sellers are not very online savvy and those kind of stuff. So. We didn't want it to be very, very complicated process. It's a word of mouth. Even today, we don't have a seller acquisition team. It's completely word of mouth. So one seller telling another seller, they're telling their family member, their friend, uh, or another shopkeeper that I listed and I saw this benefit. So you all suggest. Completely word of mouth. 
Yeah, thank you.